Hi, so I thought I would do just a short, very random, slightly out of place video, just something for the miscellany playlist really. Um, I had a friend, uh, anyone that's watched the introduction to Random Squish History uh, for the channel um, will hear me mention uh, someone who was really intrinsic to Random Squish History and to my desire to really go ahead and collect these books and put them out there for everyone. His name was Harry Hamilton. He was a fellow of the Royal Society of Antiquaries in Scotland and he was so knowledgeable. He was a professor of heraldry. He was a book collector like none I have ever met. This man had a veritable library. But more than that, he had books that no library would ever own. Um, museum pieces, you know, it's like literally 17th century publications. And they were floor to ceiling in almost every room of his house. And he was just a wonderful person to know. Uh, when he passed away, I got to know his sister. Uh, Anna Morid Hamilton and she was a celloist and a violinist um, for varying philharmonic orchestras I think worldwide orchestras uh, so she was really just as informative and interesting a person as Harry was but I thought uh, as I've been reminded of him recently having been contacted by one of his family that I would do a little video showing you a book that he gave me and it's not an old book it was a book that was published about five months before I was born in 1983 and really it's something that I wanted to bring to people's attention purely because for the amount of work it would have taken to create it's probably the most involved book in my collection, the one that the most amount of work and effort has gone into. The author died shortly before being able to complete the work and his son undertook its completion and his son's written an introduction and foreword that really just lays out uh, just what was needed to have been able to to create the publication. So I want to state clearly, I am not religious. Um, I don't hold religion. Uh, I, I did always find religion to be of interest, more from the, the reasons that people held religion, why people go to religion and, and hold religion uh, to such a strong extent in a lot of cases. Um, I was always very curious uh, about that, the, the reasons that people might be driven to religion. So uh, the book that I'm wanting to show you, now that Zara Cat has given me some space, is this. And it is the New Testament in Scots. Uh, and... I'll read what is here. So this is the Lord's Prayer in Scots. It says, Pray ye, than this gats. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth as in heaven. Give us our breed for this incoming day. Forgive us the rings we hae wrought, as we hae forgiven the rings we hae dreed. And say us na early, but soft us frae the ill ain. He ye forgive them folk their faults, your heavenly father will e'en forgive you your faults. But gin ye forgive not others, God winna forgive you your faults netherins. Which is a version I have not come across of this prayer. So, this is just a short video, uh, really just to, to read you a footnote from his son. Uh, from the introduction that outlines the, the efforts that his, his father went to. So, it reads, Thus, 
not content with having read through 72 different versions of Jude, Hebrews, and James in 14 languages, including 4 Latin, 2 Scots, 22 English, 9 German, 3 Swedish, 4 Danish, 4 Norwegian, 2 Dutch, 2 Flemish, 11 French, 4 Italian, 3 Spanish, 1 Catalan, and 1 Reto Romanche. He also read through at least 174 versions of Philemon in 23 different languages, including 8 Latin, 2 Coptic, 2 Syriac, 2 Platt Dutch, 23 German, 7 Danish, 5 Norwegian, 3 Swedish, 1 Faroese, 6 Dutch, 2 Flemish, 22 French, 1 Occitanian, 2 Catalan, 14 Italian, 4 Reto Romanche, 4 Modern Greek, 2 Scots, 48 English, and for good measure, 1 Esperanto. So, why I think this is uh, important despite my not being religious in any way is that if you were of that persuasion that in taking so many versions, worldwide versions of the Bible and using them all to collate one copy of the Scots edition would suggest to me that this is likely to be one of the most complete versions of the Bible, that he's taken the evidence from all the sources and put them together uh, as seemed best for his Scots version. And that just kind of blows me away a wee bit. It just, I mean, the idea that one man could read through and understand the Bible in so many languages is just, it's unbelievable to me. Um, but I wanted to show everybody and let them know that this existed. Harry was religious and um, maybe he felt like this would set me on my path uh, to, to that way of thinking. Um, I'm not that way inclined, but it doesn't stop this being a very interesting publication to own. Um, so, anyway, I will see you next time. Take care.